The mission, if I choose to accept, would be to rank all the movies in the Mission Impossible franchise, including Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, which I do accept ranking them all from my least favorite Mission Impossible movie to my favorite Mission Impossible movie. But before I get into that, a few things you should know. If you weren't caught up to the point where I am in rewatching or watching all the Mission Impossible movies, including Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, then I highly suggest that you don't watch this video any further to avoid any potential spoilers or mute the video when I start talking about Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 because I will be talking about spoilers for that movie. Not exactly sure what I'll be talking about, but I will be talking about things that happen in the movie. And of course, a few other things. This video is my personal opinion. Just because I like a Mission Impossible movie a lot doesn't mean you have to like the movie a lot. And same thing goes with you. Just because you like a Mission Impossible movie a lot doesn't mean that I have to like it a lot. And with this ranking, there's a few on here. If you ask me a different day, I may change my opinion. I'm not going to tell you what those are at the moment, but there's a few on here that could flip-flop. I watched all these movies within the last month, and this is my ranking at the moment, but... Next time I do this video, when Dead Reckoning Part 2 comes out, it could be a little bit different. So just so you know, and make sure you leave your ranking of the Mission Impossible franchise down in the comments section so I can see where you're at. And of course, Hulk smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. So let's kick things off with my least favorite movie in the Mission Impossible franchise. And this movie's kind of an island or on an island of its own. It's easily the worst movie in the franchise. There's no surprise here. It's Mission Impossible 2. While it's not the worst movie ever, it's got its good points, but the movie's directed by John Woo, and there's a lot of stuff that John Woo does in, the movie, in his movies that are in this movie, and it just seems really off compared to a lot of the movies in this franchise. Ethan Hunt is good. You have a, a love interest that only stays around for one movie, and that's uh, Nia Hall, played by Thandi Newton. Uh, she's okay, but not very memorable, and the movie's not very memorable, and the goddamn pigeons that John Woo does in this movie annoyed me. Now, Don Gray Scott, he's okay as uh, Sean Ambrose, and I'm glad that he worked on this film longer than he had to because that gave us Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, and I don't know how things would have been if Dung Ray Scott would have ended up being Wolverine, because that was the initial plan for the 1999 X-Men movie, but he got held up doing Mission Impossible 2. I don't remember exactly what happened, like they had to film more longer because something happened on set, so unfortunately this is the worst movie in the franchise, and I don't think anything could be worse than that. Uh, it's still watchable, but it's just not that in interesting. We we get the good team. We get Luther in this movie, which I really like Luther. But after that, eh, I really don't care much about it. So that's why Mission Impossible 2 comes in at number 7. I am, I do have a little bit of uh, some cue cards here with some notes just so I touch upon everything. Usually I don't do that, but sometimes I ramble in these ranking videos and I want to have a better structure for this. So that's why I'm pausing so for my number six, and this was another one that could flip-flop with number five on any given day, and I know a lot of you might disagree with my placement of number five especially, but for my number six, I'm going to go with the OG Mission Impossible movie, Mission Impossible from 1996. Good movie. You have Jim Phelps that turns on IMF, and he's like the bad guy, that, but you don't know about it. And, uh, you know, at the end of the movie, he... He, we find out that he's the one that did all this stuff. And then he actually, we find out that Claire, his wife, actually kind of set up Ethan Hunt. And he has to kill her, John Voight's character, Jim Phelps. So that was crazy. Of course, this movie is most known for the scene that Tom Cruise gets lowered down by the computer. And he's like this. And uh, it's just an awesome, suspenseful scene for an action movie. Other than that, I, I really don't have a lot to say about this movie. A, a crazy moment in the movie that I didn't expect to happen because this was in the, the mid-90s. You have Emilio Estevez's character as like their tech guy in the elevator, and he dies like in the first 30 minutes of the movie. And I wasn't expecting Gordon Bombay, a.k.a. Emilio Estevez, to die uh, right away. But other than that, I mean, it's there's not a lot to Mission Impossible 
And that's why I, at least at the moment, had to put it at number six. I contemplated it putting it at number five, but I went with number six. So that's why it's there. I know some of you hold it in high regard, but I do not. So if you want to put it somewhere else, that's fine by me. For me, number five is going to be, or coming in in fifth place, is going to be Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. And I know a lot of you really rank this movie high. I just don't think it's as memorable. Like, there's good stuff that happens in the movie, but we don't get barely any of Luther, which makes me really mad. Yes, he shows up at the end, but all for, what, five minutes or less? We hardly get any of Julia... And again, she shows up at the end, but doesn't even have any dialogue. I don't, maybe she does have dialogue, but she's not talking to Ethan Hunt at all. She's just hanging out with somebody else. So I think she does say something, but it's not the Ethan or Luther or anything like that. So those are some things about the movie that pissed me off coming off of Mission Impossible 3. And the the movie's got some great scenes that that stuff in Dubai with the big building and how the stunt that Tom Cruise does. That, of course, is really awesome. You get the introduction of, of Brant's character, played by Jeremy Renner. He's all right. Uh, why would you, and these notes that I took are kind of all over the place. They're not like in order. But I was really upset that they killed Josh Holloway's character. That who, He was uh, Sawyer on Lost early in the movie. Um, I thought that they should have kept him around. Uh, he was actually quite interesting, but they killed him off. I would have liked to learn more about his character as I was a fan of Lost. So maybe that's just why I think that. Uh, you have Paula Patton in the movie. She's okay, but then we don't see her again. Now, she was supposed to come back for Road Nation, but filming conflicts happened. I don't know if we'll see her character again. It's very possible she might show up in Dead Reckoning Part 2. Spoiler alert, I guess. That means she's not in Dead Reckoning Part 1. But at the moment, we haven't seen her again. Um, those are really the only notes I took. You, you had a villain in the movie that isn't really memorable. Uh, something about a, I don't even remember the villain's name. I know he was in there, but it's just not memorable. So that's why I put Mission Impossible 4 or Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol as my number four. And if you want to cancel me, that's fine. Again, this is my personal opinion. This is really what I think my opinion could change, especially on another rewatch. Number four for me, and this is another one where you're really going to disagree with me because usually this is people's number one or number two, but I'm going with Mission Impossible Fallout. It's a good movie. So if you, so going back to the early in the ranking, Mission Impossible 2 on an island of its own, the movie's not very good at all. Mission Impossible, the original, it's okay, but again, not much better than two. And then you have Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, you have Mission Impossible Fallout, and you have the next one that I'm going to talk about that are kind of all grouped together. At any time, my opinion could potentially change, but at the moment, my number four is going to be Fallout. It's a great movie. It's awesome. It just other movies I enjoy more at the moment. You, of course, Henry have Henry Cavill in the movie. He's great as a, a guy that's on Ethan Hunt's side at first, but then he's the bad guy, which is awesome. You have uh, chemistry between Ethan Hunt and Isla Faust, uh, which is good. Luther and Benji have really good roles, which is awesome because you like to see, or I like to see a lot of Luther and Benji. You have Julia returning, and I just is it doesn't he call her Julie though? I can't remember, but Julia, she's in the movie um, for a pretty big role, but not one of the main leads. But she's in the movie for not just a cameo at the end, so that was nice. And her and Ethan kind of get to talk a little bit, so that was awesome. Uh, other things about the movie, you have Vanessa Kirby as the White Widow. Not a lot there with her character in this movie, but she it was still cool to see her in the movie coming off of Hobbs and Shaw. And you get the the scene in the movie, which is my favorite part, where you have you have the bad guy that returns from the last movie, uh, Solomon uh, Lane. He's he's in the the what are they the, the sewer system or something like the tunnel, and uh, you have uh, um, Henry Cavill's character watching him, and then we find out that wait a minute that's actually uh, not him. It's just crazy. But anyway, the the whole moral of it is that you end up killing Alec Baldwin's character, Alan Humley, uh, which was crazy. I, I didn't think he was actually dead just because like it kind of caught me off guard. But uh, 
I, I enjoyed it a lot. So again, Fallout, great movie. Lots of good things happen in it. It's about nuclear stuff, but it just falls lower on my list simply because other movies in this franchise, to me, are just a bit more memorable. And I know it's a great movie. Number three for me, and I know a couple people that have this higher than Fallout, but not many people. But rewatching all these movies like I just did, I liked Mission Impossible Rogue Nation more than Fallout. It's really good. And again, on any given day, my opinion could change with especially those two movies. Those could really easily flip-flop. Uh, you you have the debut of uh, Alec Baldwin's character. Well, he doesn't last long, but he, he debuts in this movie. Luther is prominently you know in this movie after the, the abysmal performance that you get from him. Well, it wasn't his performance, but the, the lack of Luther in Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. Uh, no Julia in this movie, which really pissed me off. And then Solomon Lane, I think he's a very underrated villain in the Mission Impossible franchise. I mean, you don't have very many villains. But I think he's a really good villain for like what he can do with his mind. Like you have the start of the movie where Ethan Hunt is like in that uh, he's trapped, and he like Solomon Lane, you know, gets the one up on him. But in the end of the movie, all these cat and mouse things and all this stuff, Ethan Hunt gets the better of him, and he's in the same situation that Ethan Hunt was uh, in the earlier part of the movie. But I, I really liked his character as a villain. Uh, you have uh, what the hell did I write here? You have the debut of, uh, well, Rebecca Ferguson as uh, Isla Faust, which I really like her and her, her and uh, Ethan Hunt kind of develop a chemistry, but they're not really romantically linked. Uh, you even have her saving him at one point, but then she leaves him and Benji. So that's good. But I could go on and on about it. I just, I didn't expect to like Rogue Nation as much as I did when I rewatched it, but I actually liked it just a little bit better than Fallout. Why? I just liked it more. I there's no real rhyme or reason. I just enjoyed it just a slight more. You're talking about like a a 9 out of 10 versus a 9.3 out of 10 or something like that. So we've reached my number 2, which of course will give you what my number 1 is. And my number 2, as it stands right now, and this could also change, is going to be Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. Part one. I really liked that movie. I've never been so into a Mission Impossible movie, at least seen it in the theater. I kind of went to them before and didn't necessarily think they were these awesome movies, but I was really into this one. Obviously, the scene with him jumping into the train, you know, that Tom Cruise is crazy. They I wish they wouldn't have showed so much of that. You get the Haley Atwell in this movie as Grace, and I think she actually steals the show. I really liked her character quite a bit. I thought there was instant chemistry there. Is Ethan Hunt going to end up with her eventually, whenever these movies end, if they ever do? I don't know. I heard a rumor that Tom Cruise wants to do these until he's 80. Can they really make that? I thought the next one was supposed to be the last one. I don't know. You have the return of uh, Kittredge, uh, played by Henry Zazerny. Uh, which he didn't have a huge role in the movie, but he had a role nonetheless. And it's good to see him because we haven't seen him since Mission Impossible 1 from 96. So that's good. What other notes did I take? Unfortunate, spoiler alert, you get the death of uh, Isla uh, Faust, which uh, you know I, I didn't like. I think they should have done it and made it more epic. It kind of happened in the middle of the movie and then just kind of dropped it. I would have preferred that to be an end, but then people would be mad that there was a cliffhanger. So it was good to have Rebecca Ferguson in it. To me, every time I see somebody die in a movie now, I wonder if they're really dead or not. I'm pretty sure she is, but you never know. But she had a good run in her movies uh, in the Mission Impossible franchise. And then, of course, you have, you have a villain in this movie that doesn't get a lot of time. Well, our human villain, because the AI is kind of the villain, but you have... Gabriel's character, played by Isai Morales. I think that's how you pronounce his name. If you're not familiar with that actor, he was the villain in Ozark Season 1. He played Dell only in Season 1, and then they killed his character off. But he's really good in Ozark for what he gets, and I think he's really good in Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 for what he gets. Like He's kind of like that guy that's done this game before and knows all these things, and there's a backstory that we don't get a lot of with him and Ethan Hunt. 
And I feel like he's going to be really fleshed out in the next Mission Impossible movie and been given, you know, a lot more to do. And he might end up being the best villain in the Mission Impossible franchise, uh, I think. But I think he's really good for what we saw of him. You get uh, the character of Paris, played by uh, Palm Clementa. I don't know how to pronounce her name. The Mantis in the Guardians of the Galaxy and Avengers movies. Uh, her character arc where... You know, she's bad. She's this, like, assassin character. But then there's a moment in the movie where something happens where she turns. And then you have Gabriel going after her. And then she ends up... I've already said spoiler alert. She ends up saving Tom Cruise or uh, Ethan Hunt and Grace in the end of the movie. And we're not really sure what the fate of her character is. I They said she's got a pulse. So I think she did really good. And I wasn't expecting that. But once Tom Cruise like spares her life you kind of figure like oh does that change her like her her mindset on things you get uh i'm talking a lot about this movie i apologize i didn't want to ramble but this movie is so fresh in my head that i want to talk more about it that ending scene with well extended ending with with uh ethan hunt and grace in the train cars and they keep falling down and then they go to the next one then it falls down off the cliff and it just kept going. That was pretty awesome. I mean, there's a lot of awesome things about this movie. And the runtime, it says two hours and 50 minutes I, on the movie ticket that I have or the movie on my online app. Honestly, it did not feel that long. Like movies th that are that long, I feel, I did not feel that, it did not feel that long to me watching Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. So at the moment, that is my number two, although that could be my number one someday, but Coming in in first place for me, if you haven't figured it out already, not a lot of people have this movie as number one, but mine is Mission Impossible 3. I really like this movie. Um, first of all, Ethan Hunt is now a trainer for IMF. You have Philip Seymour Hoffman as an awesome, like, I don't give a shit villain. Now, I don't even remember his villain's I don't even remember his character's name, but he was awesome. That's weird that I don't remember his name. I just put uh, P-S-H, but that's just the actor. But he is great. And then the stakes are raised in this movie because you have Julia essentially a hostage for this I don't give a shit villain that will kill her. And it's just awesome. You get... Lawrence Fishburg in the movie is kind of like the Ethan Hunt's boss. And we're led to believe that he's bad. Like, they keep pointing the finger like he's the bad guy. He's the bad guy. He's he's the one putting all these things in notion. But it's actually the guy that's been helping Ethan Hunt at the, 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 the headquarters place, which I guess I didn't see coming. So that was awesome. You get some characters in this movie that they haven't used since this movie, like Maggie Q., um, she was great. The uh, Billy Crudup, or I don't know how to pronounce his name. He was really good for the limited role that he has in the movie. You have Carrie Russell in this movie. She plays the character of uh, Lindsay. She's a trainee of Ethan Hunt, and she dies, and that's really like sad and like just bad. like Ethan Hunt has to like not be. A, he's got to go back and do dirty work again because people are dying now. Because of this, this insane psychopath, Philip Seymour Hoffman villain. So those are the notes I took on it. Uh, you get introduced to Benji in this movie. He's at the headquarters place. So he's not on the field yet, but he plays a, a pretty good role. I just really love the, the movie. And then at the end, you have uh, Julia's character that she has to do some things because Ethan Hunt is, he can't. So she has to step up and it's like she does good. And it's just, it's such a great movie. I really enjoy it. I don't know why people have it so low. I mean, they don't necessarily have it real low, but they have it like in fifth or fourth place. And I really like it. And it's its very possible, like I said, this could go down to number two once I rewatch Dead Reckoning Part 1 again. But I really like Mission Impossible 3. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's in my top 30. And I'm not sure if Dead Reckoning Part 2 or Part 1 will get there, but certainly the door is open for that. But as it stands... Right now, Mission Impossible 3 is my number one. So I'll go over the ranking again. Number seven, Mission Impossible 2. No surprise there. Number six, Mission Impossible. Number five, Mission Impossible Gross Protocol. Number four, Mission Impossible Fallout. 
Number three, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Again, Fallout and Rogue Nation could easily flip-flop. Number two, at, at the moment, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. And my number one, Mission Impossible 3. So, there you have it. Hate me down in the comment section. Tell me how ridiculous my ranking is. That's okay. Please let me know your ranking. I don't care if you want to make fun of me or say whatever you want to say or, oh, you screwed up this fact from this movie, which happens sometimes. That's okay. Just make sure you leave me your ranking down in the comment section. That's all I really want. Hulk smash the like button. Share the video with a friend. Uh, leave me any comments. Leave me your thoughts about Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. And what do you think about Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 2? Tell me what your favorite villains are in the franchise. I mean, I, I think Philip Seymour Hoffman's character is the best villain. I can't remember his character name, though. I should have looked that up, but I didn't for some reason. Uh, Solomon Lane's character, uh, Henry Cavill's character, which I don't remember his name either. I know it's a very bland and boring name. I just can't remember it, but... Let me know what your favorite villains are. And then, of course, last but certainly not least, don't forget to hit that sub button. You're watching the video anyway. Subscribe to the channel. Join the team. Show your damn support. And be a part of something special. And J-Dev will return. And this video will self-destruct.